Well, good morning to you. It's a lovely morning this morning again. Um, middle of May. It's Friday morning. When did it be Friday? Gosh, I don't know where the days go. They seem long each of the days and yet they pass. We were saying that time passes more quickly as we get older. But um, I wanted to share something that um, was shared with me on Wednesday night. Uh, on Wednesday evenings, uh, Terry and I join via uh, Zoom. <laughs> Gosh, I didn't know about Zoom before lockdown. Um, via Zoom with the um, one of the Bible study groups at my daughter's church, Grace Vineyard Church up in Croydon. Um, and uh, uh, they were thinking about this verse in... Uh, 2 Corinthians 10, uh, verse 5, just this phrase, which has always been a very important one to me, um, and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Take every thought captive <coughs> to obey Christ. Uh, uh, we, we may not think we are, but we are actually able to control our thoughts. Now, there's a good thought for the day. You know, uh, you can control your thoughts. You can choose what you think about. You can choose where you set your affections. You can choose what you spend your time thinking about. And this is one of the main problems, isn't it? If we spend our time thinking about what if, what if, what if, if we think about the things that might happen in our lives and we follow that thought pattern through, um, we have to be very careful because what we spend our time thinking about, you, do you, you know something that um, everything that we do is conceived in our mind, every, every action, and you cannot... You cannot do some of the most awful things people do without thinking about it in their mind. We don't automata. We're not robots. We're not automatons. We're not ro we're not robots. We control the thinking in our mind, and sin is born in our mind. You know, um, we may think. You know, you, you think. Well, sometimes some thoughts that go into your mind or come into your mind, you think. Well, that's sin. Well, actually, um, you know, it's a temptation to sin when it first arrives. Um, what a wonderful story. <laughs> Not Well, a long time ago, anyway. Um, uh, when, when I had one of my children in, in a pushchair, I can't remember which it was, and uh, I bought uh, a bag of toilet rolls, which, it, which was on a bag, and it was on a sort of thing, and it was hanging off my, off my arm or off the, the back of the pushchair as I was going around the supermarket and I got to the door after I'd been through the checkout and realised that I hadn't paid for it, that it was still on, on my um, arm. And uh, the thought went into my mind, look at the queue, you'll disturb everybody going back and trying to pay for it. And it's only a bag of little toilet rolls, it's only whatever it was. It was under two pounds, it wasn't a huge amount of money at all. It did, you know, no, nobody. Well, it's it's worse to go back and try and pay for it. That was the thought, which I took captive to the cross of Christ, and I said, "Now, what would Jesus think about me thinking like that?" And I knew I had to go back, whatever the problem was. And I went back and I paid for it. So, and I, I'd always thought that the phrase I had in my head was, "You can." You, you can't stop the birds flying over your head, but you can stop them making a nest in your hair. It's up to you what settles in your mind and what you think about. And Paul, of course, encourages us in Philippians 4 to think about good things. Think about the beautiful things, not think about what if, if this happened, or if this didn't happen, or if, 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 what would I do then? no. Think about the good things. Think about the honourable, the true, the praiseworthy, the wonderful world that God has made, the beauty around us, the green around us, the, the intricacy of flowers and birds. Think about the beautiful things, not about the negative things. So while we're in this lockdown, we have the choice how we think about it. 
We can think about it as a negative experience. We can think about it as, oh, I'm not allowed to do so many things I used to do. I, my wings have been clipped. Oh, it's what is? how am I going to be like in two months' time when it's still going on? Am I going to be tearing my hair out? We can, we can go down that route <clears throat> and we can be tormented with the thoughts that go through our head. But we have a choice. But on Wednesday night, uh, during the course of the evening, this was the way it was put, which I thought was a lovely new way of looking at it. And it was that our, our minds are like the control tower at an airport. And it's up to us which planes we allow to land on our airstrip. It's up to you which thoughts you allow to land on your airstrip, on your mind. I thought it was a lovely picture, you know, that we actually have control over our thoughts. We are not controlled by fear or worry. We're told to stand against it. We're not controlled by the evil around us or the culture around us. We can stand against it. We can refuse it. In fact, that little passage, and we're going to think about it some more tomorrow, I think it is, says, um, we live in the, though we live in the world, we are not carrying on a worldly war, but we are carrying on a war. But us, many of us, we live our lives as if we're not carrying on a war. And there's been a big move in Christian society to, to not talk about warfare, not talk about being a soldier for Christ. There are some churches that won't sing on with Christian soldiers anymore. Or if they do, they change all the words because they think we shouldn't be military. But we are in a war. And just like what we celebrated last week about the victory in Europe, if, if this country had not fought a desperate war against Nazism and against um, the Third Reich, uh, we would be speaking German now. We would be under a completely different life. Um, we had to fight. And people fought with t gritted teeth and, and determination and courage, despite everything that was thrown at this country and at the Western civilization. We fought. And we are in a spiritual war. Not just a spiritual battle, but a spiritual war for our souls and the souls of those around us. And we are simply too passive. And we need to, we need to start this war knowing that we are not helpless and unable to control the things that come into our minds and the things that we think about and the way we view life. We have control. We are. We have autonomy. And the only person who won't abuse that autonomy is God. He will not force us to do anything. He invites us. He invites us to be his friend and his servant and his disciple. And he invites us to learn from him and to follow him. And Jesus showed how you could fight against the evil in the world in which he lived. And it's his example we try to follow. So this is my thought for the day. Today, be in charge of the coning tower or the control tower of your airport and keep an eye on the aeroplanes, the thoughts that come and try to land and be discerning about them and bring every thought to the cross of Christ before you let it land. And have a great day. We'll see each other again tomorrow. Bye-bye.